talking to the past couple days. Just this guy. Who's that to you? Eddie. Cute, huh? Not as good looking as your old man, though. Night, kiddo. Night, Daddy. been abducted by a child predator, some psycho child molester. We don't know yet who has her. Sam, that's what we're going to find out. I can't sit here and do nothing. We're doing everything we can to get your daughter back. Why don't you come along? At Panic City, DJ! Come to the Faith has been missing now for over 24 hours. We have hope and a promise. Protect my daughter. Atlantic City's on the move. Step on it. Hello, Atlantic City. These girls are being trapped. Running out of time. Can good actually come from evil? I didn't think so. Sam! But God thinks differently. Good morning. My name is Jerry Go. I'm the associate pastor for music and worship at the First Baptist Church here in Vicksburg. And uh, that was just a trailer of, of what we're going to do tonight. I want to show the movie. We're going to premiere the movie, Finding Faith, tonight at 6.30 at First Baptist Church. And now I'm going to turn this over to uh, Martin Pace, Sheriff Warren County. Thank you. Guys, we have a very special treat for you today uh, that uh, the people at First Baptist have uh, organized for you today. I don't know how many of you uh, are familiar with Big Time Rush or if you've watched uh, your parents' television and watched Chips, but uh, Eric Estrada has, has long been in front of a camera, uh, different, uh, different television shows and movies, but, but even before that, he wanted to be a cop. And he currently is. He's a captain with the Bedford County, Virginia Sheriff's Office, where he is a member of the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. And he is going to talk with you today and uh, I believe be able to answer some, some questions for you about Internet safety and, and all of the evils that lie just beyond, beyond your mouse button out there. Uh, most of you probably know Todd Dykes. Uh, Todd is a detective with the Sheriff's Office here in Vicksburg. Todd has worked for me for a number of years. Todd is our representative with the Mississippi Attorney General's Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force, or ICAC, and uh, Detective Dykes works these cases right here in Vicksburg, and some of them you hear about it, some of them you don't, but it's a, it's a very serious and very dangerous issue uh, that we want all of you to be very aware of. And without any further ado, I'm going to turn you over to Captain Eric Estrada. Glad you're here. I'm glad you, you have to be here. Uh, <laughs> the sheriff referred to me as a treat. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe trick, but not treat. This movie here that we're going to screen at the church, we made this movie. It's based on a real story that happened, a real event that happened. A young girl, 13 years old, took her smartphone and posted a picture of herself. All right. Her name was her name was Danielle. Be cool. Her name was Danielle. And we changed the name, of course, and we call it Faith. We call her Faith Garrett in the movie. Thirteen years old, very pretty cheerleader at school, posts a picture on her smartphone. Girl, nice home and everything else. So the sexual predator online watches your communication with other people in chat rooms. And they take notes and they find out because you divulge so much personal information that they already know what you like, what you don't like, what's compatible to your liking, the kind of boy you might like, or the first time you've been kissed or the first time you want to get kissed, whatever. And they get online and then they start posing as another person and start talking with you all about some of the stuff. They'll talk and communicate with you about the same interests that you have. And then you go, whoa, this person's cool. Then they'll single you out, and then they start talking to you. This is called grooming. The online sexual predator grooms the young people. They want our children. This is what they do. They want our children. The new thing in sex trafficking in this country right now, and the thing that we deal with now, 
and it's a big, big seller for these people, is rape on tape. They will get friendly with you. They will find out your information, what your mother's name is, your address, your father, and all this. And then they'll do one or two things. They'll call you up. Uh, they will communicate with you and say to you, hey, I'm going to be driving by your house. Why don't you come on out and say hi to me? And you'll say, well, I can't come out after supper. I got homework and we're not allowed out. And they'll say, well, if you don't, I'll knock on your door and I'll talk to John or Mary, your father and your mother. And you're going to be embarrassed because you don't want your folks knowing that you've been talking about things. And so what does a child do? A 13-year-old would do. 12-year-old, 14-year-old, 15-year-old. What would they do? They, they will get embarrassed and say, okay, 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 I'll be out in a minute. I'll be out in a minute and I can only stay two minutes. You come to the car and you realize that it's not the picture that was sent of this person and you freak, but they will grab you and in most cases, they will punch you in the stomach just to freeze you right then and there. You ever get punched in the stomach? It blows. I've been hit lots. And it's not a good feeling. It totally debilitates you and you can't move. They'll punch you in the stomach, tape your mouth, grab you and throw you in the back of the car. And they'll take you to a motel or the woods or wherever. And they will rape you for days. They will steal your innocence. That's what they do. And then they'll sell you and ship you out of this country for sex trafficking. Yeah, it's here. It's not only in Bangkok and other third world countries. It's in this country now. So what is the next best thing so that you don't get taken? Education is the best prevention. My goal is to get internet safety education put in every school. I can do a private school like that and we give you the teachers the software to teach the program from K to 12. Age appropriate, interactive, because the young people are going to be using the internet. You're using it all the time, and that's fine. But you got to know how to be safe. You got to know how to protect yourself so that you don't get taken, you know. And then you can teach your children when you have them how not, what not to do on the internet. If you're going to go on the internet, you're going to in chat rooms. Don't give out your personal information. Don't tell them where you live. Don't use your own name. Use a false uh, phantom name. Don't accept gifts. And certainly never, ever, please, go meet somebody that you've been talking to on the Internet. And then if you're talked to inappropriate, and you know what that is, you go to a trusted adult, and they'll go to the... you you got a great detective here. you got a great ICAC. ICAC is ICAC, Internet Crimes Against Children, task force here that will go, especially if they cross the line, and they will... They will apprehend this person through, through the computer. It's a dark subject. It is, it's, it's dark, I know. It's not cool. But you've got to protect yourselves. You've got to. Be smart. Be safe. Stay sharp, you know. But do what you've got to do with the Internet because you're going to need it for information, homework, communication, of course, commerce, and all that. I've seen my share of child porn because I've, I've had seven years of it and three years. I was a cop in Indiana for three years and then I went over and got involved so I could use my recognizability. You may not know me, but your parents know me. <laughs> but tonight, if you come to the church, come in, there's no charge. You come in, you sit down, watch the movie so you get an idea what's going on. We made this movie to educate the young people and the parents, really. Really, if you're online, well, that's your business, but be safe. Now, I can go on and on and on, but I only got 20 more minutes, I think, or 15. So I want to open myself up to questions. Questions. Don't be afraid to ask me. You can ask me anything about this, about that, whatever you like. I'm happy to be here. I just come in from, I was in Alaska on Friday, did a charity Saturday. Then Sunday, I was in Vegas. And then I took two planes to get here. I've been on six planes in four days. And I got in late last night, finished with a church in Hattiesburg. I didn't get to bed till about 1.30, but I wanted to get up and come and see you people. Because this is, we made it for young people to see. All right? So please join me. Ask me some questions. If you got something, go ahead, fire off. Anybody want to fire off something? <laughs> I know, I sat in auditoriums too. <laughs> All right, well, nobody's going to talk to me? Yes, got one.
Go ahead. I'm coming down there. Come on, darling. I want everybody to hear your question. All right, she's first, you second. Come on, get up. Get up, get up, get up, get up. What's your question? What time is that thing tonight? What time is that thing tonight? The thing tonight is, I believe, oh, at Whist. Pastor, what time is it tonight? 6.30, it starts. And then afterwards, I stay, I stay there afterwards and take pictures and autographs and do all that. All right, she's next in the your baby. Why are only girls in here? If guys are the ones raping the girls, why aren't the boys in here with us? Well, that's what I asked. I said, only girls? Is this a girl's school? No. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they did it this way, but boys get taken too. Young boys get taken too. There are a lot of female predators out there. And, you know, they do get taken. And they get taken by men. And the one thing you got to remember, when a child loses his innocence, they never get it back. I've dealt with girls that have been taken when they were 13, 14 years old. They're now in their 20s. And they are, 90% of them, 95% of them are totally dysfunctional because you got to live with that. Can you imagine? You got to live with that? Being raped over and over, being sold to the sex trade. That's something you got to function with for the rest of your life, and you don't do it very well. Trust me. I know many of them. If a child was abducted, if a child was abducted, would you be scared that you'll never find them? When a child gets abducted, we also, what we do with the money we raise, we have a thing called an identity kit. <sighs> we take a picture of a child four ways, front, back, sides, take their fingerprints, have them talk, and then have the parents get on the hard drive and talk about the child's needs, any medical needs and anything. Because when the child does get taken 72 hours, it's most crucial. If it, you don't get them back in 72 hours, you, ain't, you may not get them back. They're either buried or they've been shipped out to sex trafficking. And that's what happens. So what we do with this uh, thing that we give to organizations, this kit, it's a suitcase, is that we put all that information on a hard drive and we give it to parents so that if your sh child should go missing, the officers that come to question you, you just hand it to them and say, because you'll be frazzled. And you just hand it to the officers, and they got all the information they need, and they can get an Amber Alert out real quick. I had somebody over here. Who else? Come on, come on. All right. How often does this happen? <laughs> we got about, well, the FBI... The FBI statistic on a child being approached online is 100%. 100%, not 10, 20, 30. 100% that you will be approached by an online sexual predator while you're on the Internet in one of these chat rooms. All right? And how many? I say about 200 children go missing daily through the Internet. They go missing. It happens as we talk. Some child right now is, is being complimented, being praised, being groomed so they could take her or him. It happens as we speak. It's a lot bigger and a lot worldwide spread and happens more than you think. It's just something that people don't talk about, but we got to talk about it. You, you're all going to have kids one day. You want to protect your child. You don't want your child taken. You don't want to be taken. So you got to learn to protect yourself. Does it, hap does it happen more to girls than it does boys? It happens to both. It happens to both. There's a, there's a market for boys and girls. It happens to both. Does it happen more to girls than boys? I want to say it's equal, but I think, I, I think it would happen more to girls. But it does happen to boys. You can't, you can't neglect that. Come on. Who else? Right here. What's the most uh, common age group? Well, the most, she asked, what is the most common age group? Now, 
in my training, I had to deal with a lot of seeing a lot of things. I used to, I'm Puerto Rican by nationality. I was born and raised in Spanish Harlem, New York. That's where I come from. And uh, I've seen a lot of, I, I would translate all the child, the Spanish child pornography that come through my unit. Because in Virginia, I'm the only Puerto Rican there. So, <laughs> so, uh, so um, I say they'll take them from eight months old. They will take a child. I've seen children eight months old, okay? Yes. Folks, this is real serious, just as serious as you living your dreams. This is real serious, and we just want you to be safe and educated about the dangers. That's what this is about, you know? All right, who's next? Let me go on that side. Where are we? Right here, baby. Here. Talk, talk right into it. Will, we, will we be able to find this film online? Uh, we haven't given this film to Hollywood yet because I wanted, I'm taking it to – since January 7th, I've been on the road with Jason, the producer of the movie, and we're taking the film – all over the country, uh, at churches, because I want children to see this. It needs to be seen before we give it to Hollywood. Because Hollywood will take it, spend a few bucks on advertisement. If it doesn't make the bread that they want, they're going to shelf it. And we didn't make it for that. <sighs> Online, you can go to findingfaithfilm.com and take a look. And I, I, don't, I don't think you could stream it yet. But sooner or later, it'll be out in the market. I think this fall we're going to give it away because we're making another movie about religious freedom. Because young people in here and people in this country have constitutional rights to pray when they want to pray. To wear a t-shirt that says, Jesus is cool or God is my butt, whatever you want. You have freedom of expression. There's no law against it. They just frown on it. But you have constitutional rights. When you graduate, you want to say, thank God. And I want to thank the school, the community, whatever you want to do. You can use the word God. And that's another movie we're going to educate young people about. And then, of course, we sprinkle it with a little Jesus, you know? <laughs> All right. More. There's more. All right. Please. More. Come on. Come on. Come on. Use me. She said if they take them 18 or older, can you get them back? I don't think you can. I personally, I don't, personally, I don't know. Uh, but but I'll tell you, they want them young, and they'll take an 18-year-old, and they'll put her to work. And they'll ship her out of the country. She'll work in foreign lands. If, and, and if they try to get away, they kill them. It's that simple. Pass this down. She asked, what do I do? Well, let me tell you what I do. I try, I'm trying to get internet safety education put in every school. That's one thing I did. Me and Evander Holyfield did D.A.R.E. for seven years together. That was a great program, D.A.R.E. But it was federally funded. The feds, the feds pulled the money. The program is virtually gone. There's nobody teaching our children, hey, don't do drugs. You know, tell him to shove it up their nose. Not yours. No, nobody's teaching our kids this. So... My goal, my goal through all this is to get internet safety education mandatory in every school in this country. Public schools are more difficult than a private school. Private school, I can come in, show a presentation of what's going on on the internet, and give them the software, and it's free. I give it away free. I do a lot of motorcycle rides, a lot of charity work so I can raise money to make the software to give to the teachers, to give to the schools. That's what I do. I'm a dad. I've raised three kids myself. I got a 13 year old daughter. And I just want to leave something behind for the children to be safe. You know, that's what I do. Uh, 
I was born in Harlem Hospital, raised in Spanish Harlem. I always wanted to be a cop because my dad was a heroin addict and my mother kicked him out and she started dating a cop. And that's, my, that's where my passion for cop came from. But there was a girl when I was 17 who was in drama and I wanted to meet her so I, and she was in drama class so I figured I can get in there. I grew up in the streets of Harlem. I can act, you know? So I got in, and next thing you know, I want to be an actor. I don't want to be a cop anymore. So I had to fight my mom for a while on that until, until I was able to move her out and have her living the way I wanted to live today still. 30-odd years, she hasn't worked. I paid rent. And she lives in Manhattan. And, yeah. You know what? A man's luck and a man's progress and successfulness is dependent on the blessing of his mother. You're all going to be mothers one day. You know? <laughs> all right? But, so I chased the acting thing and then I ended up as a cop on TV. I'm well known as Ponch from a show called Chips, Motorcycle Cop. And then, uh, then I got the opportunity 10 years ago to become a cop, so I took it. I became a reserve in Indiana and then I got involved with Virginia and left that department because I wanted to do something with my recognizability, my celebrity. I'm using my celebrity to get in the doors that we normally couldn't get in, all right, and get people's attention. So I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually a kid who wanted to be a cop and then an actor, and then I played a cop on TV. Now I'm a cop who acts once in a while. So that's where I'm at. Say what? Say who? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. If you go on YouTube, you can pull up all kinds of stuff. But uh, my first movie was a movie called The Cross and the Switchblade. I was 19. My next one was The New Centurions, and then a Hawaii Five-O. And then I always played the Latino with the gun, the knife, the brick, the bad guy on television. And then I got chips. And then I went to Mexico and did a Spanish soap opera that was extremely powerful, uh, popular, Dos Mujeres Un Camino. I did that. That was 15 years ago. What? You saw it as little girls. Because well, maybe you weren't born yet. But, uh, <laughs> and then I did the Latin Dancing with the Stars last two years ago. I almost won. I came in third. <laughs> I lost to two girls. Well, sure, because they put all these bikinis on and they go like this. So I lost to them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm out there. You just hook me up. Just hook up the... Go to YouTube and check it out. Question. Yes, baby. I'm sorry. Is it common that a sex offender will ask for money? They'll, yeah, they'll ask for the money they make you sleep with somebody to get. Yeah. That's what they're in it for. They're in, sex offenders in it for self-pleasure. And you can't fix a guy. You cannot fix a child sexual predator. You cannot fix them. They're unrehabilitatable. It's a choice that they make. They're not fixed. They need to be caught and they need to be caged. And that's it. That's the bottom line on that one. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else? Oh, we got a whole bunch up there. Are you kicking me? You kicking me out? Oh. Story of my life. I'm getting kicked out again. <laughs> this is our pastor. Tell him again the church. Y'all give Eric a hand, please. Thank you for all this time and. Just, uh, just a couple of things. One, don't think of just yourself in this situation. If I were to ask you how many of you have little sisters or little nieces or cousins, okay? So think about that. We want you to come tonight and see the movie and learn more. So the First Baptist Church down on Cherry Street, 630. We'd love to have you. Don't miss it. Bring your parents. Thank you so much. Y'all wait till the bell rings. <laughs>